morning, everyone. Good morning, and welcome back uh, to another Porsche Cooled podcast. Uh, we're up to episode 13, and today we're going to talk about uh, the GT3. But before we get into that, um, if you haven't been to my podcast before, this is a podcast where we just talk about Porsche, uh, not necessarily just the 911. We talk about Porsche history. We talk about other models in the Porsche range. Uh, we talk about my uh, 997.1 Carrera and my ownership journey and my experiences uh, owning a 911. Uh, basically, all things Porsche. That's what the Porsche Cool podcast is about. Uh, this podcast is also supported uh, on my YouTube channel. Uh, the YouTube channel is under Michael Bath, um, and it's also uh, we've also got an Instagram, and the Instagram is simply Porsche Cooled. Uh, so check those out, and if you haven't followed already or you haven't subscribed, please support both of those. That would be great. But uh, today we're on the podcast, and this podcast will also be um, on my YouTube channel. It will be, uh, usually the podcast goes up uh, Wednesdays and Fridays. Now, and I apologize to my regular uh, listeners to this podcast, as I didn't uh, put an episode up on Wednesday. And this is actually Friday's episode I'm recording today, and it's Saturday. But a little bit late, but it's still happening. So I apologize for that, because I, I really am trying to do two a week. Sometimes things, other things just get in the way normal uh, work life. So welcome to the uh, Porsche Cool podcast. And as I said earlier, uh, this podcast today is going to be about the GT3 and the 992 GT3 in particular, and what's what's in store for us with the 992 GT3. And is it going to be a lot better than the 991 GT3? A brief, a brief, well, first I think we'll start with a brief look at the 991. Uh, those of you who know about the 991 uh, GT3, that would realize that the 991 GT3 in the first uh, generation, in the 991.1 generation, um, had a few issues. And the 991 GT3, it was a tricky one for Porsche. Uh, it was, it was, I did read somewhere that someone said it was a bit of an emotional roller coaster because the 991.1 uh, variant of the GT3, when it first came out in 2014, it had a lot of, um, it had engine issues, and it wasn't just the engine issues that started very early in the uh, very early in the delivery stages for the GT3. I mean, early owners uh, who bought to, who had the GT3 ordered and they bought the first the first batch basically had a lot of issues with their engine. Basically, they were catching on fire. Uh, I'm not going to get into the technical side of it, um, but they did actually catch on fire. And then, coupled with that, there was a lot of uh, controversy and a lot of mixed reviews that Porsche decided to get rid of the manual. They decided that the GT3 didn't need a stick shift anymore. They were just going to have PDK, and they're going to have PDK only, and that's how it was going to be, and don't say any more sort of thing. Now, that we do know changed, but just getting back to the engines, I mean, the 991.1 GT3 engines, if you're looking at a 991 uh, GT3, and there are some very, very good prices out there at the moment. Uh, I know in Australia and the UK, if you're looking at 2014 models, they're, very, uh, they're, they're really dropping in price. And I guess for the early models, there's a reason for that. Uh, a lot of people say, says now it, uh, say that it doesn't actually matter. But the 991.1 engines and the engine fires, the engines in the 991.1 GT3 uh, were basically designated in the VIN three letters. There was E, there was F, and there was G. Now, the first lot of engines were E, then F, then G, obviously. G was like the end of the range, and I think G is what the uh, GT3 RS was based on. And the GT3 RS doesn't have the issues, I don't believe. Most people say that G is the best. Other people have F and say there's nothing wrong with the F in engines in the GT3. And then other people say the problem still can happen in the G, uh, G VIN numbers of the, of the GT3 of the 0.1, 991.1. Most of the E type engines or the E VIN, VIN engines have been replaced by Porsche under warranty. Uh, sometimes when you look in the classifieds and if you're looking for a GT3, some sellers will say that the engine's been replaced by Porsche under warranty. Other sellers won't. I noticed even Porsche, when they're advertising them, I don't think that they even say that their engine has been replaced. I guess 
they want you to come and look at the car first and then they can discuss it with you. What Porsche did do though is they offered a, they gave owners and owners after that uh, a 10 year engine warranty on those engines. Now a 10 year engine warranty is pretty good. Um, I don't, I think the engine warranty starts from the year of manufacture of the car though. So if you've got a 2014, if you're looking at buying a 2014 GT3, which I know in Australia, you know, there's some for like two early, early 200,000 Australian dollars, um, your warranty is going to run out in 24. So you've got a three, you've got a few years left. Um, I think we're going to see a flood on the market of a lot of GT3s when it gets close to ending of this 10 year engine warranty. Um, I think a lot of original owners or second owners are okay with it now when it's under the 10 year warranty. But I think once it gets to, once it gets close to that, I think there's going to be a lot on the market and the price is really going to dip temporarily, I think, temporarily. In, uh, what was it, 20, so 2017? 2017, late 2016, 2017 model year, isn't it? The 991.2 came out and the 991.2 had no issues. And not only did the 991.2 have no issues, that Porsche listened to everyone in the Porsche community. They listened to the people in the forums. They listened to the criticism. And I think they also brought this back to minimize the impact that the engine issues had in the point one. They brought back the stick shift. They brought back brought back the six-speed uh, manual. Uh, they still offered it in PDK. Some people still chose to take a PDK for the track. People prefer the PDK for the track. But it was offered in a manual, so Porsche... And Porsche does this a lot. They listen. They do listen to their enthusiasts. They do listen to their followers. Um, and I think, I mean, my, my thought is that they brought this back because they had so much uh, bad press about the engine fires that they thought, let's make it better. And they also fixed the engine issues. And the 991.2 GT3 is apparently very sublime. It is, it is the one to get. Uh, people say if you get a manual in that, but even the PDK, it's just a, an amazing machine and that's the one to get. Not many, I don't see many come up in the Australian market. I know in UK they do. I think they're still holding reasonably good prices, the 991.2. But I think if if uh, funds allowed, you know, uh, those of you who know me know that I'm a GT3 fan. I've said many times before, my friend has one in Sydney. Uh, I would like to get a 997 GT3. 0.1 or 0.2, probably 0.1 is better. But I don't have any any problem getting a 991.2 GT3 uh, in manual. I think I would actually get it in manual. There is one available in Australia at the moment. Um, there's one available for a white one. It doesn't have the lightweight bucket seats. And that's sitting, that's probably a very good value one because it's very highly spec'd. And it's about 290,000 US, uh, 290,000 US, 290,000 Australian dollars. So I guess that's about 200 odd US dollars and that's about maybe 150,000 pounds, something like that. I'm not sure how that compares. I'm, I'm sure it's more expensive than the UK and I'm sure it's more expensive than the US. My choice would be the point two. I probably wouldn't risk a point one, even though the prices are very, very tempting. They're very, very tempting, but I wouldn't do it. So that's where we're at. Uh, what else? Did, oh, that's the other thing too, which I didn't mention. With the 991.2, Porsche also introduced the Touring package. I know it's just called uh, GT3 Touring, but it's actually the Touring package, which you can could have selected on the GT3. The Touring pack package uh, you meant you lost the fixed wing of the standard model, and the Touring package package only came in manual. So that's how they differentiated the touring package from the normal club sport wing, winged, uh, it's not club sport, but the winged version is that you lost the wing, came in manual only. And a lot of people compare this uh, touring package to the 911R. Uh, I was listening to a podcast the other day with Magnus Walker and uh, Porsche Malone on Instagram, Porsche Malone. Porsche Malone is, uh, who is it? His father's got a really big Porsche collection in the US. His name slips me at the moment. Uh, and he's got a, a Touring. And he's driven both and he said they're, they're definitely not the same. They're different. Um, so people who buy the Touring think they're getting like an R, but the R, the 911R, the limited edition one, which was hitting you know a million dollars in Australia a few years ago, uh, there's a couple for sale now for around 600000 So they price dropped. But I, in Australia, they retailed for 450000 and they were invitation only. Uh, I find out. I found out not long ago that a friend of mine actually has one in storage, which he was trying to. He bought as an investment, uh, and he actually bought it at list price. So, 
I'm not sure if he's sold that. All right, so that's a bit of a background of the 991. Uh, I haven't really spoken about the engine specs of the 991. Um, the 991.2 uh, GT3, of course, is a rear engine. Of course, it's six cylinders. It had 500 horsepower, um, the 991.2. And I'll mention the 991.2 because this is the one that will... I don't think you can order it anymore. I think it's probably... The orders are probably stopped. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I'd say the orders are probably nearing to be stopped on the GT3 um, because of the, the 992 model coming out which we'll get into in, later in this podcast, but the 992 version coming out later in the year. 460 newton meters of torque, uh, maximum revs 9,000. Top speed, uh, top speed was, and I'm going to say it in kilometers. Sorry, guys, you guys in the US. Uh, top speed for the manual was 320 kilometers an hour. Top speed in the PDK was 318 kilometers an hour. I didn't know that. The manual is actually faster, lighter probably, I guess. Uh, zero to 100 kilometers an hour which is 0 to 60, uh, 3.9 seconds for the manual, and 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, or 0 to 60 for the PDK is 3.4. So you see the difference there, and this is why the PDK is, is the track choice if you want to, to track your GT3. The track choice is the PDK, and PDK normally was steel brakes, not, not um, ceramic brakes. So 3.4 seconds, it's quite a lot shaved off the uh, 0 to 60, 0 to 100 time. Acceleration from 0 to 160 kilometers an hour, which is uh, 100 miles an hour. Manual 7.6 seconds and uh, PDK 7.3. So PDK faster once again. Uh, I'm not going to get into too many of the other specs, but that's the basic specs of uh, the GT3. Of course, the GT3, um, that's the 991.2 GT3. It is Saturday morning here, so excuse me if I'm fumbling a bit. I've, only, I've just woken up and I just wanted to do this podcast for, for you guys. All right, so the 992 GT3. Now, I've started to see... Um, actually, before we get onto the 992 GT3, I was listening to another podcast the other day, and I can't recall who it was. I, I normally listen to Smoking Tire. Um, I listen to a lot of watch podcasts. Uh, I listen to Porsche podcasts. You know, I try to pick out people in the Porsche community who are on different podcast channels, and I listen to those. Um, so they're on varying channels varying podcast uh, channels. But, you know, they were talking about the GT3 and they were talking about the GT3 primarily in the US because it was a US-based podcast. And everyone thinks they're getting a GT3 and, and it's very unique. And I'm not trying to upset anyone here. It was just an interesting point of view. And they were saying that, you know, you go to any cars and coffee in the US and there's a, there's a handful, there's always a bunch of GT3 RSs and GT3 at the cars and coffee, usually in PTS. Um... And I know PTS wasn't offered in the UK. It was hard to get PTS in the UK. It was offered in Australia. PTS is paint to sample, so you can pick an old Porsche color or you can pick a Ferrari color if you want, I think. I think they have to approve it, but that's what PTS is. So it makes your GT3 more unique. Unique. So their point was the GT3 isn't as unique as you think uh, because the GT3, and we know we have to go back a few years, the GT3 was never a huge seller. Uh, it's become a very, very important uh variant of the 911 for Porsche. And I found this website actually, and it's called Porsche, P-O-R-S-9.com, P-O-R-S-9, uh, nine with the numeric, not written, uh, .com. And it's historical sales statistics. Now, this is just for the US market. This podcast, they were saying that um, it would, it's interesting to note that uh, they were saying that the Carrera S more GT3s were sold in the US than the Carrera S. Now, I was a little bit shocked by that because I thought, no way, the Carrera S is like, to me, is like the mainstream model for the Porsche. You know what I mean? In the 992, they say the Carrera S is, is the pick. Um, but they were saying, and don't, I don't know if this is true, and if any of you guys have access to uh, the sales figures, and this is the US I'm talking about, it was a US podcast, that the, the GT3 sales out outweigh the Carrera S sales, which is quite interesting. But I found this website, PORS9.com, and it has the historical figures for sales for the GT3. And the historical figures for sales for the GT3, uh, they've got the 997.1 GT3, uh, which in North America sold 963 units. The 997.2 GT3, which is from 2010, 2010 to 2011, 
sold 715 units. Uh, it sold less units, but that was around the time just after the GFC, so maybe those figures are low because of that. Uh, then we go into the, I'm not going to do the RS figures, but the RS figures are only only quite low. Uh, the 991.1 GT3 sold 2,191. 2,191. So from the 0.1997, which was 963. So over 100% increase. And then the 991, uh, it doesn't actually have the 991.2 because it's obviously two, they haven't actually got the figures for that. Um, but the 901 point GT3 sold 2,191 units and the 901 GT3 RS sold 1,529 units. So that's a total of, you know, 3,700. And if you compare to the 997.2, which sold uh, 600, uh, 600 odd 0.2 GT3 RSs and 715.2 GT3s. So that's about 1,500. So 1,500... 1,500 compared to 3,700, so more than double. The sales literally doubled on the GT, uh, GT3. and GT3, GT3 RS sales doubled from the 997 to the 991. So you can see how, how the sales performance from the GT3 just went crazy when they introduced the 991.1. And obviously a lot of people may have bought into the GT3 for the first time, and the 0.1s, they had, they had a lot of issues. Um, so... You know, you know, there's there's quite a lot of cars out there. They're not as unique. They're not as unique. There are a lot of cars out there. But bearing in mind, the more cars out there, also now a lot more people uh, want a GT3. So it always up in my eyes. But I just thought that was an interesting figure, and it was interesting that I heard that on that on that podcast, and then I just uh, found that information there. I remember there's a there's a post on Renlist, uh, the Renlist. If you check on Renlist for the 991 GT GT3 forum. Um, someone was posting, it could have been for the point two. someone, somehow, someone had access to the figures of what the specifications and options people were choosing. So whether they took the manual, whether they took the, the better headlights, whether they took the chrono package, whether they took PDK, you know, all those things. And, and it had it all listed and it also had the colors and how many people ordered PTS. Uh, I tried to find it to bring it up in this podcast and I couldn't find that that post. I don't know why I couldn't find it. Uh, maybe if I do a better search, I could find it. Um, maybe some of you guys have seen that post, but it's quite a good post. It's quite interesting. And the guy that was putting it up would put it up quite regularly so you could actually see it. I think it was when the, the 991.2 GT3 first came out and he started posting the figures of it. I think the split between manual and PDK was pretty even, but it was seeing the colors and the options and you know what? When you see all these figures and they start to get more and more and they start selling more, it's quite interesting what people buy. I remember the cloud crayon color was very, very popular. That was a very popular color after the, the typical silver, white, red, and blacks. Silver, white, red, and then I think cloud was really popular. I don't think the, the blues and that were very popular, but uh, it's normally the, the typical colors that people go for. Anyway, we're not talking about colors today. We're not talking about PTS. We're just talking about the GT3 in general. So the 992 generation GT3. Uh, GT3 will be released first, I, I believe. GT3 RS, I'm not sure how soon before they release, release the GT3 RS after the GT3. I think it's pretty close from memory uh, from, the, from the 991. So it's going to be interesting to see the, the 992 GT3 RS as well. Um, I don't want to talk about the GT3 RS, but everyone knows the 991.1 is a very good one. I like it. Uh, the 991.2 GT3 RS apparently is just amazing. Uh, still fetching very, very high prices though. So the GT3, uh, gen the 992 generation GT3 has been, there's a lot of pictures online. You might, guys might have seen it. It's also on a lot of websites. Uh, they've been testing on the Nürburgring. And we also saw a very brief peek. If you haven't watched uh, Porsche's 2020 uh, Super Bowl ad, where they steal the cars out of the Porsche Museum and take them for a race, uh, the security guards, worth a watch if you haven't seen it. It's on YouTube. In the beginning of that video, it's like right at the beginning, there's a storage uh, shelf behind them, and on that uh, storage shelf, there is, I think it's a blue uh, 992 generation GT3. So Porsche put a little bit of an Easter egg in that video, and it is, it is actually in the video. You can't see a lot of detail, but you get the idea. But we also are getting a closer look of, of this car, because Porsche has been doing its usual testing, 
And because the 992 GT3 is probably going to be released, I think it's the end of this year, uh, it will come out as a 2021 model, um, but it will be released uh, at the end of this year. I guess they'll do that uh, virtually again. They'll, they'll do some streaming thing. I doubt that they'll release it at any motor show uh, based on the current situation in, in the world with the pandemic. So we're getting a really, uh, we're getting a better closer look at its design. The things we're seeing, we're seeing that it's got dual hood vents. Now, I've read on some things people are saying this may not be the GT3 version, this could be the GT3 RS version, and the GT3 may not have the hood vents. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but then they're semi-camouflaged. They're not completely camouflaged now, but we can still see uh, a lot of the features. Um, center lock wheels. Uh, the center lock wheels are a slightly newer design. As per each new generation, they're always updated and uh, revised. The rear diffuser, I think, looks a lot different. And the rear diffuser has the dual center exhaust tips. The rumors have it that the, that the engine will still be a naturally aspirated flat six. So don't worry about it only being a turbo. Um, Porsche apparently is going to keep the GT3 and, and, and keep all our purists, all the purists happy that it's going to have a, a aspirated flat six. And coupled with that, it's still going to be available in manual and it's still going to be available with the dual clutch uh, automatic transmission, PDK. Uh, that's what's that's what everyone's expecting. And that's what all the reports are saying, and I don't think that I don't think they've got that wrong. I think that's pretty spot on. It's got a huge uh, the camouflage being mostly off now when it's testing a Nervo ring. You can see that it's got a massive uh, a really huge central intake in the front of the the apron, and people have said it looks a little bit like the 1973 Carrera RSR. Most of these reports that are out there, they're saying this is a GT3. Like I said. I don't know. You never know. It could be the GT3 RS. The GT3 might be slightly different, but they're saying that it is the GT3, these, these elements. The hood vents being a very interesting one, which I said before, the hood vents uh, on the standard GT3 look, on the, on the one they'd been driving around the Nürburgring, it looks pretty cool. It looks very, very cool. A lot of the prototypes, there's also been some prototypes spotted uh, without a rear wing. So they're saying the Touring package would return. So the Touring package that we saw in the 991.2 GT3 wasn't just a one-off. It's going to be a regular variant, uh, regular, it's not a variant really, it's an option package. So it's going to be a regular option package for the GT3. So it's going to be interesting if the Touring package does return, how that compares with the 991.2 Touring package, which like I said, was very, very highly regarded. So that's, that's something to look out for. That's something pretty exciting. I think everyone, when they talk about what car would you really like to have as an everyday driver and a track tool, uh, you know, and I would say it as well as the Touring Package GT3 in a nice paint to sample color would be perfect. Uh, and I think that's, that's, that's a car that's on everyone's list. Um, I don't think they sold a lot of Touring Packages. If they did, not many are coming up for sale. I think the people that bought them uh, are really want to hold on to them. So that's... You know, those of you who order cars before they're released, they are apparently going to bring a touring package back with the GT3 touring package option. Um, I guess the controversy of the GT3 that's been seen testing, uh, it has a swan, they call it a swan neck wing. It also has a ducktail as well. There's a ducktail and there's a wing. The wing looks a little bit weird. A lot of reports are saying it's a little bit, an, a bit of an odd shape. Uh, for, people, for those of you guys listening to this on YouTube, I may try to put some images up in this video. Um, I try to get these videos up on YouTube quite quick. Sometimes I have imagery and sometimes I don't. I might just put a picture of that up so you guys can actually see what the wing looks like. But the wing is a little bit, it's a little bit odd at the moment. It's got a little bit of a strange, uh, strange shape. And it's been discussed a lot online. I asked my friend about it. He said he doesn't reckon that's what it's going to end up looking like. A lot of people, so you've got the wing and then underneath you've got this little ducktail spoiler. Uh, a lot of people are very keen on the ducktail spoiler. I'm not a big fan of ducktail spoilers under wings. It looks okay. Uh, maybe it's a point of difference from the previous generation. Maybe it will work. I know a lot of people are putting ducktail spoilers and doing aftermarket ducktail spoilers and putting them on 996s and 997s. 997, of course, it was on the Sport Classic. Didn't have a fixed wing though. I don't know about the ducktail spoiler. I'm on the fence. I think they look good on air-cooled. I'm not sure if they look good if you add them to your 996 or 997. Um, but anyway, it's got a small ducktail spoiler, and then it's got this fixed rear wing. It's a little bit of an odd shape. Um, it could be just for the testing prototype. It could be just Porsche fooling us. 
uh, we'll have to wait and see until until it's launched later in the year. Um, of course, it'll be a flat six, as I said before. It will be it no doubt will get a bump in power uh, every time they bring out a new generation GT3, GT3 RS, etc., or even Carrera or Carrera S. It's always a slight bump in power over the previous generation. Uh, the previous generation, like I said before, the 991.2 produced 500 horsepower. So we expect to see a gain over 500 horsepower. How much of a gain? I think usually we're looking at about a 5% maximum gain, I think, if we, if we look back on other models. Um, so there will be a bump in horsepower, um, which means, I guess, the more horsepower, the brakes, everything has to change slightly. So it'd be interesting to see the, the full specs once it's launched. The 992 generation uh, will debut later this year. Like I said, it will be a, a 2021 model. But have a look at the images online. Uh, like I said, I've, I've been looking at them on various websites. If you're interested in looking at those sales figures for the... I'll put the links in this podcast, in the, in the, in the uh, description section of this, com- of this podcast. Sorry, I can't talk today. Uh, like I said, the first one is the figures... Uh, and then you have a few car and driver has uh, an article about it. They're quite excited. And then uh, Autoblog also has one. And what's the other one? Auto Evolution. But they're the three sites. Like I said, I'll put the link. Um, they all pretty much say the same thing. They don't really say. They all say it's got a big wide mouth. They say that the, the wing is a little bit odd, but it might not be the final production. They say it'll be available in manual, and they say it'll be over 500 horsepower. So everyone's pretty much saying the same thing. Um, but the GT3, uh, no matter what generation it is, there's a lot of talk about GT3s. You go onto any Porsche forum, everyone loves talking about a GT3. Uh, they really have um, become a very, very popular variant for Porsche. The GT variants have become very popular. GT3, GT2, GT2 RS, GT3 RS. Um, the sales, you can see from the sales figures, it's an important model for them. They do put a lot of effort into it. The GT division from Porsche do actually, they really are spot on with this, I think. Uh, and the GT3 is, is a great driving car. Watch any of the videos on YouTube if you don't know. If, you, if you're listening to this podcast and you don't know much about the GT3, just search uh, Carfection, search Chris Harris, uh, watch some of his videos on the GT3. Uh, they're always very, very entertaining and you always get a good idea of what the car is like. Uh, one thing I like about Chris Harris is you it's like you're driving the car the way he explains it, and he really does uh, do great reviews. So I would check that out. But the GT3, would I buy one? Of course I would. What would I get? Well, new one is going to be way too expensive for my budget. Uh, it scares me spending that much money on a car. Um, but like I said, those of you who know me, I'm always on the search for a 997 GT3. If I was buying a 991, I would go the 0.2 variant, which has the uh, better engine, and has manual because I would get the manual. Um, If I was getting a GT3 RS in the 991 though, I would get PDK because it's only available in PDK. But even if it wasn't, I would still get PDK in the RS. I don't know why, I just think it works better in the RS. But that's about it. So just a bit of an update on the GT3 if you haven't seen it already. It's very, very exciting. I'm going to update this podcast once uh, Porsche, when Porsche release it, when they officially launch it, or if there's any changes, I'll do another podcast about the GT3. But very exciting. It's always exciting uh, at this stage in Porsche's uh, model line because at the moment, as you know, they've released uh, they released the uh, 4S and the S and then the Carrera. Now they've done a launch on the Turbo, Turbo S. Uh, they've already announced that for the 21 model year, the some of the features that are in the Turbo S will be available in the Carrera, Carrera S, Carrera 4S, etc., Uh, So we have a lot more variants to come. We're only at the beginning of the 992 generation. Uh, Porsche will continue to tweak the 992 model. They will continue to bring out their multiple variants. Uh, They will eventually, at the end of the model range, bring out one of those uh, special edition. They'll have this, uh, no doubt they'll bring out a 992 Speedster. Uh, There will be lots of of model variants to talk about on the podcast over the coming years. because we're just at the beginning of the 992 range. And you know what? I know a lot of people thought the 992 that were always a little bit on the fence about the rear of the 992. I've had, I have seen a few, and I'm sure some of you guys have seen them now, especially in the US and the UK. I've seen a few, and I'll tell you what, I really like it. And I think the 992 generation, there's something about it that the rear of the car, which I always was a bit unsure about, looks so much better 
in real life. Uh, you see one in real life, it will change your opinion on the 992 if you're on the fence about the rear. Um, and I do like the sport design package that comes on the base models because I like how in the sport design package, if you didn't know, front apron, rear apron, and you can get the side aprons, but it basically puts a number plate up into the center of the bumper on the rear, which looks in my mind a hell of a lot better than, than the non-sport design package. Anyway, thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Uh, my name is Michael Barth. This is the Porsche Cool Podcast. Today is Saturday. I'm actually doing this podcast from Bahrain, for those of you who don't know. Uh, I come from Australia, and as I said earlier in the podcast, I have a 911 in Australia in storage, a 2006 997.1 Carrera. Um, I love Porsches. I love talking about Porsches. And I also have my YouTube channel, which I've said before, I'm, I'm stumbling for words. I apologize. Uh, I also have my YouTube channel under Michael Bath, and there's also an Instagram called Porsche Cooled. So take a look at those. Uh, if you like to follow, just hit the button follow when you're there or hit subscribe on the YouTube channel. But this is the Porsche Cool Podcast. Thanks for listening, and I'll speak to you guys soon. Bye for now. <laughs>